How did you start the show? Hello, you are on the air. <laughs> you know what I was pretty amazed? Uh, hi. <laughs> you know what I was pretty amazed at, Josh, though, is the uh, outpouring of love for us. Outpouring. Yeah, absolutely. Is, I felt it wash over me. I mean, many people would say, well, that's like uh, 10 people seemed happy about yes, it. That's several, enough for several me. Several people were happy, very happy we were back. And and then Jen Kirkman was happy, which is a goal of the sh- which is in the show Bible as one of the goals. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm here's what I'm worried. About. I'm you know I don't know if you know this in the break. Uh, I I went to uh, I cured most of my problems. Oh, excellent. No, like remember I had the memory thing. No. <laughs> See. <laughs> But da but da but da but da. There's no comedy take with that thing. But da but da 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 da. Well, I guess they have that part. <laughs> what does Benny Hill music sound like? Uh, well, specifically, it sounds like. <laughs> Do you think that's a cool <laughs> thing to, 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 Are you coughing? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do my version of that. I can't. I really lose it. This is why I'm not one of the world's greatest any, any no singers, <laughs> saxophone singers. I don't like my voice, John. <laughs> Are you, now, what happened? It hurt. It hurt doing yakety sacks. <laughs> I don't want you to have a... Your pipes are so important to this show. Your pipes. Yes. I don't want anything happening to them because we, we can't... Uh, although I have to say, my Andrew Cuomo... You've heard my Andrew Cuomo, right? Uh, I can never hear enough of your Andrew Cuomo. Okay, ready? Sure. <laughs> you know what, New York, people of New York... I'm too gracious. I was too much a gentleman because <laughs> I was too nice. Then I don't know. I'm dead. You know, I, I, I can't do voices around you. But uh, I come from a part of Sicily where you would say, Bella, Buda, Bila, Chaka, Chakunga. <laughs> nah. <laughs> you know how, why you're. But you're Better. on the trail. You're on the trail. I'm if on the just, trail. You I'm need on... to, you know, you need to sit down with a pencil and really get the words that you want to sell this with. But... <laughs> this is good notes for me to do characters. <laughs> How do you do it now? You get a couple. First of all, you work on it, I think, too. You, you've got the essence. Now get the text. I just love the fact that he's so, you know what his problem was? He was too, he was, he he was not flirting enough or something. Oh, that's know. right. He's gone now, right? All right. And I apologize if somebody perceived my obnoxious behavior as <laughs> obnoxious behavior. Let me, I apologize to all of those 11 women, every single one of them. All of those Sicilian non-understanding ladies. You know what his thing I'm he watching is? Kind a, of... I'm watching the Robert E. Lee statue being lowered off of its pedestal on TV. Didn't we already get all those off? No, the, the big one in Richmond is now gone. That, Virgil, oh, quick, come see. There goes the Robert E. Lee. That would be terrible. Band members were there upset. <laughs> in the 60s, in this, you know, uh, they did <laughs> sing a lot you about. You just aborted that really hard. <laughs> well, no, because I, I started to think in my mind that, uh, you know, because like uh, Tom Sharpling always kind of says that, he doesn't like the. I love the band, so he calls them Civil War reenactors. And ever since then, I've been wondering. I mean, they do. They do right. I mean, I, I'm not saying they're pro South, right. <laughs> but there's a lot of people who are like, they sing a lot about the, the people who are disappointed in the South, and I'm a father before him. All right, but that's the same song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a second. 
Is it just one song that seems to be like make you sad about the South? That's pretty the Southern much, white it's, people. It's, it's pretty concentrated in the night they drove old Dixie down. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'll be very sad. They also made a Spike the, Jones reference, so I think it kind of counteracts. What, 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 what did they say about Spike Jones? Me and the back of Papa Pee's, she had Spike Jones on the box. She said, I don't like the way he sings, but I love to hear him talk. Well, that just came. For, for, I don't want anybody to get me wrong. I am so into... The band, although uh, Robbie Robertson sometimes is a little earnest, I decided. He's a little uh, pompous, I think is really more. <laughs> That's what it is. What and then Bob said. I watched, <laughs> like, uh, he did a, a doc that's on, I don't know which of the channels it's on right now. I think it might be Hulu um, or Amazon. I don't know. They're all a blur. They're all such a blur. Is that uh, Charles Nelson Riley? No, that was Paul Lind. Oh, that's mm, with the cup. I'll see you at the cabana. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was Rip Taylor, I think. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, there was a Robbie Robertson did a band doc, and it was uh, it was a little uncomfortably self serving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wasn't that the whole thing with that they that the other fellows didn't like about him was that he was always hogging all the limelight. I'm not exactly sure the full roots of the uh, of the animosity. Well, I have the book, which I didn't read. I know, I know the covers I know he and Levon. He and Levon uh, ended up. Yes, in bad well, that. Terms. But I think at the end they did uh, reckon. Uh, you know, they I did maybe come maybe, together. Maybe, but that might just be a self-serving story of his. You just can't. Tell. <laughs> I'm Robert Robertson. <laughs> Memoirs. That's not his. That's James Fry's book. Memoir. What was the name of his? I have it if you want it. A staggering work of something genius, that one? <laughs> no, no that's, that, that's the, that uh, was the McSweeney's. That was Eggers, yeah. <laughs> no, I thought that's how people generally describe my career. Staggering, they use. <laughs> <laughs> how? You know what? You get in there. That's why you do, you get right in there. And you go... I'll agree with half of it, staggering. <laughs> but the genius part, you know what? It is? As as you as I hear genius in my mind, I see my daddy. I see my daddy. <laughs> no. and, and him you know, calling, my daddy and him is calling the, you a genius in that tone. Oh, great genius! Right. And maybe it was. Maybe it was that one time when he said, "Let me tell you a little bit about physics." You want to talk a little bit about physics? Yeah, I said. I, I said, yeah, we were talking last week. And, Great genius. Right. Oh, you're a genius. That's like with the only times I call my wife professor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great professor. Can you ima imagine if you belittled your wife? Uh, we belittled our, our, if that was our go-to, was belittling others' intelligence. Wait, that's my whole act. Bing! <laughs> no, I don't really do that. I don't belittle people's intelligence, but I do have other ways of being... I'm better than you. Well, you I mean in some ways. You have you have the dichotomy of I'm better than everybody else in comedy and yet I'm terrible. Is kind mm -hmm. of is kind of the message that the state of the Oh, industry, you mean you're talking the about the state of the before, industry address. I'm talking mostly. You're talking about before therapy and before things, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Cuz like a, a lot of people don't realize that Josh and I when we were talking about, you know, uh what we were going to do with the show, we did it from a very, uh, I, you know what, you know what happens? I lose the, I lose what the bit is, uh, a, and I lose the ver, the vim and vitality. You are connecting us to therapy and us talking about the show. If you want to try <laughs> to get back on the horse, I talked to uh, to my therapist about us getting back together. Yeah, what did? How did that go? Very. Is everyone she, is she seems, for it or against it? There's a, except for I'm just gonna say like one person, except for the one person in the building on the first floor is not a fan. They said, "You oh, by the way, you noticed how?" So, wait a second, is that a question? Am I? Am I? I hope I'm not messing up Friday. But someone said my favorite podcasts are twice a month, and I stuck into that. I was like, "Yeah, his favorite ones." 
We could be even bigger. If yeah, we but do I think less. he named ones that actually prepare for their shows. Oh, oh, I don't want that. Yeah, no. I think you know if you were actually delivering after that that week off. Well, I think I've been. You know, here's the thing: I was taking a break. Like you said, you said last night, uh, or whenever you said, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, ten is ten thirty tomorrow. All right? Are you ready? <laughs> Uh, if I get too far with this obnoxious character, how are you going to warn me to stop it? I'll say fuck you or something like that. Code. And you know what? I, I, I really don't want to look at you during the show I've decided. Oh, that's good. That's fine. Now, don't you think it's better that you don't see me? You wouldn't want it this particular second. I know that much. Why? Because you're naked? Uh, no, because I'm giving you the finger. <laughs> I think what it is though, that you are still a little misty eyed when I would come over your house late by four minutes. <laughs> I had a great anecdote. You know how many anecdotes people have missed about that the guy who lives near you with the lights on? Just that guy. Just that guy. <laughs> and there's so many things have happened in your neighborhood that I don't talk about like I used to when I would walk here in fear. Right. I'm scared. Susan, <laughs> I used to think I was going to get killed coming back from your house because you live in an exurb, as opposed to your inner ring existence. No, I just but isn't that word coming is getting very popular now? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, the suburbs. We live in the suburbs, right? Uh, well, no, we live in the city of Los Angeles. Okay, yeah, but okay, right. But when I thought of Los Angeles, this to me, Los Angeles looks a little like Riverdale sometimes. A little bit like Los uh, Angeles is a lot of things, Andy. It's a yeah, lot that's of the th thing. It's a lot of things. <laughs> There's something for everyone here in the city of Angels. Do you feel that way? Uh, I kind of do. I kind of do, actually. Have you been to Pacoima? Uh, I have, and there's something for those people there. <laughs> no, I. You don't have to sell me on Los Angeles. And I know you're not trying to sell me on no. Los Angeles, but I really do. But let, but here's what I wanted to say, and I, I hope that I don't uh, do the, one of these things where I start talking about different subjects and forgetting them. Uh -huh. But last night when you said tomorrow morning at 1030, I, I couldn't imagine what you were referring to. <laughs> I started to get fear about it, but now I'm up. I literally said, let me see what I literally said. I said podcast tomorrow, question mark. 1030 again, question mark. And I said, oh, my God, honestly, I don't remember. I think I said something. You said, oh, I forgot. Words. Good to go. <laughs> I'm so, and the thing is, it is charming what I do. It is. I'm kind of a bumbling fool. It's like having a, a, it's like a, you're like a Jewish Jiminy Cricket sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jiminy Cricket. You know, I just realized, I did I love Jiminy Cricket? Or did I love any time the lights went down in school and I could watch any, I watched anything. I don't know if the kids today can experience this, but I would watch those 50s. Didn't you love those horrible demonstration movies about how they wash your hands? Yeah, just because you could sit in the dark? Yeah, I just loved it because it broke the monotony. Yeah. And it was already, no, I'm trying to think, Was I, did I know it was campy? No, I had no idea it was campy. I love Jiminy Cricket. He's going to, you know, he lived, actually, the the sad thing was, uh, Josh, Yeah. he did not live to 103. Did you know? I don't know if you're familiar with this. Well, I know he ended up at the old Cricket's home. <laughs> Wait, I just realized something. He's a Cricket. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> I, I just, I never could get the name. I know, I thought it was a pun. Yeah, what would be, what would the pun be? Well, <laughs> Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket, it's a top of the morning. Not a pun, but kind of like a British thing. Jiminy Cricket, top of the morning to you. Yeah. But he doesn't look like a little cricket, does he? Well, he's little and green, and he's named Jiminy Cricket as another clue. I thought he was like a, lepre a leprechaun. Nope. <laughs> nope, he's a cricket. Okay, well, here's the thing. I certainly got to the bottom of that, I'll tell you that. So I was scared about this morning, very scared about it. Not really. I'm not, I'm now, I'm completely up. Yeah. Because the Adderall, I did, I did an Adderall when I woke up. Yeah. 
and then you know I always have to think, when do I do the Adderall? Right. <laughs> And now I'm having a memory that we talked about room 222 because we talked about the campus. But did we talk about the fact that three numbers in a row have have a uh, kind of a, a lucky numbers? They're my lucky numbers. So I'm uh, hoping. So that's what makes this episode coming up. 222. So special. Uh, it's going to be such a mild stone. Not a, I say mild So at any time there's three numbers in a row, you feel that's lucky? Is what yeah, you're I do. I, yeah, I do. Sadly, it's that simple. Okay. All right. So my favorite ones are 333. Three, three. Okay. And do you know how... Oh, don't say anything. Oh, I use 333 three, three in, in many things. And it's like, it's like <laughs> that's a... Like your, so that's, that's your pin number, isn't it? 333 three, something. <laughs> Actually, my lucky number is 26 because I, uh, my wife's, because uh, her daddy was born in 1926. My dad was born in 1926. We got married on 526. I proposed to her on 926. So, oh, I have all these things. And I know that you don't have, what, do you have these things with numbers? Not really. Although, I, I, as a kid, 25, I sort of declared it my lucky number, but I don't, there was nothing deeper than that. Well, this is the way astrology, here's the way astrology works to me. Oh, 25. Well, 25, you know, they have a reason for everything, you know. Oh, the reason why, oh, you got the 25 card. And the reason why you got that was 25 means that you're dreaming of your youth. Don't don't just pretend that nothing happened. I don't need to pretend. (laughs) See, here's the difference. A lot of people don't know about this, but... And I'm going to be honest about it. We got in. Okay. We got into a fist fight. Is it that hard to admit? <laughs> and it, the thing that pissed. And, and I was like, I'm never going to fight this guy. I'll never. But when right in the middle of an argument, when this asshole does the thing with puts his hand, hand on my head so I can't reach him. It's very frustrating. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're toying with me as I'm trying to beat you up. All right. <laughs> You're saying things like, I could beat you up and prepare a sandwich. (laughs) As I'm spinning you like a basketball. I don't ever see you as a a physical. I don't see you like Kiefer Sutherland in Stand By Me. Uh, No, no, I never. It's never my first thought. I always wanted that scene in Stand By Me to be in my life. And And would I always think, what if I was in that city? Because it's based on a true story. Where he goes, what are you going to do? Kill all of us? And then that, this is how I respond. No, Ace. Just you. Cock the pistol. See, can you see me doing that? Okay, absolutely. Uh, and then you drop the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell people, I can tell you this, and I, and I know that you agree with me. I watch a lot of these true crime things, and I know if I had a gun it would be immediately taken away from me. <laughs> and I've taken Taekwondo. Yeah. It would be, I, I would not have, I would start crying. I don't know if I could shoot somebody. I really me. also think that the phrase, give me that, would be involved. <laughs> <laughs> give me that. <laughs> you know what I would do? I would resort to my Superman training and throw the gun. at. The- <laughs> That's, yeah, but you have to, you're you supposed to wait till the bullets are out to throw the gun. <laughs> I've been to a shooting range. You could empty it and then throw the gun. <laughs> Otherwise, it's dangerous. <laughs> uh, but you've been to a shooting I, range, you were saying? Yeah, when I was in, uh, I did that uh, rap that wraparound movie show for TNT. Even as I say it, I, there's so many words that make no sense. What would that be? A wraparound movie show. Right. I mean, I guess you could. And so I went to the, the well, uh, I mean, shooting yeah. range. Uh, the Mystery Science Theater was an, essentially a wraparound movie show. All right, I just pretend as if I'm on, on to something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, right. A hosted, uh, a hosted movie is what they used to call it in old time. A TV. hosted movie is exactly what it was. So I learned how to shoot. I went to the range, but I just don't think. I have a problem. I don't think I could. Mur- I've never thought about murdering somebody. and And yet I have so much anger. Uh, well, I think it's good that you haven't thought about murdering someone. No, it is. Even my, even my therapist says so. But, uh, 
you know, but I'm sure you've thought about killing someone in self-defense. Right, but I have this like thing where I don't understand. That I guess I don't understand the like when I watch a, a, a true crime show and it's about how someone got shot once in the not not the head shot once. You know, tastefully, a tasteful. You're upset at someone. You want them dead. You can't resolve it anymore with talk. Right. And you shoot them, but you don't rip them up. It's when they get into the actual joy of killing that uh, it sounds it, it, I, I get a little queasy. Yeah. Well, maybe you shouldn't play with the big boys. Then, Andy. <laughs> what does that mean? I shouldn't hang around with serial killers or right, get out of get out of the deep end. <laughs> but it is kind of silly. You know, in other words, like these shows vary so much because I tell you that like there's a show called buried in the backyard. I think I'll talk about this. I don't know. But it's like, why would you watch a show? Uh, called uh, or dismembered bodies, or who's who goes on to watch that content? They go, oh, oh, honey, this is the one where everyone's found in different barrels. Well, I think people, I think there's some people, Andy, who are different than you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's, what would you? Call I mean, that I think tone? I think you're sort of weird in that you have the fascination with murder and true crime, but not the blood and the squeamishness, boy. <laughs> You could not have summed it up. That's exactly what it is. I love true I crime. like the poisonings, not the stabbings. <laughs> uh, now I would say that I used to love the poisonings, but... I'd I like got, to see a good asphyxiation mystery, please. Do I have to be so pathetic? Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> and then every once in a while, I think about how I would be as a recreation actor. Uh, and what would you be recreating? Anything. I'm. What am I picky? Right. <laughs> I. I you know, now I'd like to do you know, the beer you know, hall putch. Yourself, well, did you say the beer? Is this was that preschool burger? No, that was Andy. That was you. Oh man. Uh, it's just a weird thing. Oh, here's the other thing. I like. They are excellent shows on like the ID network and stuff like that, but. I think I I have a thing. In other words, do you have a home network? Which is your home network? The news when you're at home. I can't watch the news anymore. My it's not network. ever my home like network. My default sort of is that? What yeah, you mean? it's not like no. I know you love New York. I know you love L. A. One. I mean, let's forget about. <laughs> and and uh, yes, no I pretty better. much default to the news. Like right now, there's there's either CNN or MSNBC muted on my TV right now. Right, and I can't do, and I cannot do that. And I'm proud of myself that we. I can't do it. I can't. Do it. I can do it because I convinced myself that if you watch the news hours in a row, it was new. But now I'm so sensitive to the fact, like, what more am I going to learn about that hurricane? Right. Nothing. No, I, I learned about I, it in a I, half I don't hour. watch as much, nearly as much as I did during the Trump administration. Right. Uh, the, yeah, I'm, but that's, I'm sure. But you... that's purely because the, the Trump administration promoted the feeling that shit could go down at any second. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And I was made just so terrible. And that was, you know, uh, in large part, that was due to Trump going, hey, my news cycle is waning. Here's some more bullshit. <laughs> it's hard. It is really very hard to, uh, if you were going to tell somebody, like, from a different historical time period, what that was like. I mean, I'm sure it's been like that before, but every single day, Every single topic. I was just thinking that the other day, where he would be like, what he would be like doing if he was still in charge of the of the pandemic. Right. Uh, so that definitely feels so much better. But the other thing is that I can very quickly get. I'm staying away from the uh, like the Dave Anthony's of the world in my mind, screaming about Biden or yeah. I just I'm, I'm I don't. I'm doing much better about not getting involved in I have to worry about how people think about Biden. That's good. It is good. Also, not knowing what the slu like the Afghanistan thing. I just like I can't stand that all the news is is like he should have done it on Thursday. Why didn't he do this? You know, and then you got these like a uh, 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 military experts named Spider who used to be on Fox <laughs> News. It's like. 
I'm beginning to think that there was no that the problem with Afghanistan was when they uh, they went and and changed it to uh, going after Os- Osama uh, Hussein. That's when the cha- that's when it got screwed up, and it may not have been good before then. But it, but but uh, uh, I really uh, think like Biden always did kind of want to get out, and so I kind of think he had his own plans. But then sometimes I worry. By the way, he talks that uh, uh, I'm worried that that he I, that he, uh, he's not. I don't know what I'm worried about. What do you think about? <laughs> speaking he's good. Of, speaking of sounding like preschool. <laughs> <laughs> and get back and just, no, he was always he, Biden. I I kind of followed him forever. I'm, I don't know if you have, but he's like he he could do. He was one of these very political guys who could sound like he was on all sides of an issue. But then he also has a lot of expertise about the world and so i can't i'm i'm really staying out of the fray of if i watch him and look at him and i start worrying about how he's talking i know where i'm going to end up and so so far i've stayed out of the fray yeah of getting really worried about things i mean i'm worried but well i mean there's really there's no need i've, I've seen the fray and there's no need for an andy kindler there right and that's the thing is that uh but that's also a separate issue is I'm learning, and this is really true, is I really am learning, and it's going to sound corny, but, you know, I happen to believe in, in God. You, you know, I think I told you that before, right? Yeah. So, my desire to make, to not to have to make you say you believe in God, but my desire to have you acknowledge that believing in God is okay, is all me with my father's uh, argument and all that kind of stuff. And I don't have to have that anymore. I can believe in God and not be ashamed of it anymore or to have to defend that I'm a moron. <laughs> all true. Or convince you. Like I would say you, of all the people in my life, are, I don't think most people are like you. I think most people really have strong opinions about, you know, religion and uh, maybe there are more people like you, but the fact that you, uh, you know, you don't see it as a threat that people have faith or something. No, I see it work. as a gift that people have faith. Right. That like, and yeah, that's you that's know, so great. I think people misuse that faith quite frequently. Right. But, Absolutely. You know, but I think there's a certainly a perfect world situation where someone is both faithful as well as uh, honorable. <laughs> You know, in the way that yeah. in the way that faith affects their behavior, you know. Well, like in twelve step programs, the whole idea that goes like, you know, they're trying to get you to admit that you're power powerless over things, and they always go, you know, and that you can give it up, whatever it is, to a power higher than yourself. To a higher it's like, power, so, yeah. yeah. So it's like that has definitely helped me in my life is realizing that my little mind constantly working on are you a good person or are you a bad person are you good? that that little mind is not right. going to and solve. my brother explained it to me when he uh he, i don't think he would uh be upset that you know i mentioned his recovery process but my brother's probably much more jewish now than he was at the time he went into recovery it was sort of rejecting the higher power concept and someone just said to him do you think you're the most powerful force in the universe no well there you go <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. It, it can, and that, well, yeah, and that's your, that's a tribute to his being able to be open to see it, you know, not being. So well, I mean, he also has a PhD in philosophy, so you got. Yeah, I know, I know. It's like if not him, who? Right. Wow, that's amazing. Though, but it's still a very, very, a very, very hard thing to get over the emotional side of it, where you, you see. That's the thing where I, I really feel like I grew up in the age where. Because of my relationship with my father and as I was growing up, I just was like, nope, there's no God. Everyone's agreed that, that we, we, we mock anybody who believes in God. And, right. And, and, and so I felt and like... And if there's I anybody was, who could have benefited from there being something other than self, it would have been you as a kid. Yeah. We were talking about that yesterday. That What did she say yesterday? She said like... If you have a normal upbringing, then you're, you're 
parent can communicate, there's a feeling of resonation, resonance between you and your child. And so that you can kind of make them, you can, you can communicate what feeling good is about. And so you feel good separate from your opinion of your parents. Right. Because you just, oh, I'm being, come here, I'm hugging you. You know, uh, and I always assumed I got all of those hugs. I just don't remember all the hugs and the, <laughs> right. and that my dad just being so sweet and laughing would, would make up for the fact that he wasn't there all day. And I, and then, so there's nobody there where you're doing something as a baby. Your parents are going, oh, boo, boo, boo. It's, it's encouragement. Right. I, 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 mean, I didn't get that. No. That's a tough thing to have to get for yourself, but that's what you have to do when you don't have gotten that. <laughs> right. Well, and I think, you know, I think some of, I mean, I think that's the roots of a lot of people's show business journey too, is either seeking the yeah. approval they didn't get or continuing the approval that they got, you know? And mixing up, also mixing up, uh, which I do a lot and uh, every people do is like, you want to get the ego. It's okay to want to get people to say, Oh, look how funny I am. And look right. at, but when that becomes your determining factor of, uh, how you feel about yourself and depending on how you're doing in the room, you know? Right. <laughs> like, well, yeah. And for me, I mean, honest to God, I mean, that's, you know, as we've talked about, it's like my, my drive to do stand up right now is practically nothing. And, right. and it's largely based on the fact that I just don't give a shit what people think about me that much anymore. <laughs> Certainly, you know, the approval of whoever I'm standing in front of just doesn't matter to me anymore. And I think, uh, yeah. and, and without that, you know, you're kind of fucked. Uh, it is interesting. Well, yeah, unless you were going to really believe like, I'm not tied. Like I could say to you, you know what, Josh, I lost that thing about being tied to the reaction. But the thing that's, that's like in my life was, uh, my life or death was dependent on changing the mood of my parents, especially my mother. Right. So then you do mix in, it becomes life or death to make the crowd laugh. I mean, I'm not saying it's life or death. Yeah, it's not, left. And, and I'm also not saying that I'm, you know, because I've come to that, that's the right place to be. Right. No, I know, I'm not saying I yeah. achieved nirvana by not caring about what people think of me. You know, it's more just, I realized, you know, it was actually more of a response to success than failure on stage. You know, it was more like I had a really good set and I don't care. <laughs> you <know? Yes. laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, like it's, I could uh, actually go to sleep now. I don't have a buzz for three hours. You know? <laughs> Uh, well, and that, well, the thing is, I don't miss, I don't miss things, but I also had many, many years of, uh, where I, you know, w you know, the time period you had, when you started, you were, you had the work and the, and it was all, and you loved it and it was all going like that way. So I, but I remember that time period where I felt very compelled to get out there to do do it i don't feel that way because i i'm not in that phase anymore i'm not going to forget how to do it right you know it's not going to be yeah. like i'm building a persona that oh my god you were almost at an einstein level of comedy right. <laughs> and uh and, and 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 yeah so i actually feel weird not weird i i i have no expectations of the future in terms of uh club work and things like that but that's just because I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not going out until because a lot of people have canceled their things. Right. Yeah, and I'm not saying for me that it's not going to come back, but I just know that that's where I'm at now. Well, I also think you're thinking of uh, I was just starting to think about like the people who go I have I have to do it. It's in my bones. Right. That's just probably a concept from. Well, I think I felt that, I, you know, I don't know if I felt that I had to do it. It's in my bones, but I did feel like it was my identity. And if it was going to be my identity, part of that identity is doing it. Yeah. Well, but I don't even need to call myself a comic anymore, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, in fact, I, I literally I changed my Twitter account to comedy general practitioner a few months ago. <laughs> 
Well, I, I'm an entertainer, is what I can say. Ah, exactly. At least on your tax I forms. think that's on my what. What did you put on your wedding thing? Uh, I don't know. I might have been an entertainer. I was probably a writer at that point. <laughs> yeah. But you are a different point of your life because you're younger. You're considerably it's called the younger. ebb. But you're considerably young. Oh, that'd be a good name for somebody. <laughs> ebb. Uh, you are considerably younger than me, and you still have. I'm in the salad days, not the salad days, but I'm in the uh, the grandfather Yoda days, where people will be coming to me for advice or something. <laughs> did you? Uh, I don't know. Did you hear that Scott Hansen died? No, I did not. I did not hear that at all. Yeah, Scott. Wow, Scott Hansen, the former sort of comedy don of the Twin Cities and one of the founders of the uh, Twin Cities comedy scene passed away this week. Wow. How, uh, you know, I, I, I like, like, like when I go in the museum and I look at the plaque, how I always, how old was, was he like 70? Uh, no, he was like 64 or five. It's amazing to me that people, but he was also make- lived most of his adult life out of somewhere between five and 600 pounds, I would say. Right, right. And did he always have health? Did he always have health problems, or? Um, well, no, they developed as a result of his yeah. obesity. And what do you? And what do you feel about? I mean, do you have any feelings about him? Because I mean, he's like not like people think of him fondly as being the granddaddy of the scene. Well, <laughs> I mean, quite I, I the opposite. I have well, you know, I have both feelings. You know, I, I have a great deal of gratitude to him because of the literally hundreds of sets. I did in his yeah. clubs between age 16 and 20, you know, and, right. you know, literally hundreds. And, you know, and he treated me like a comic. You know, he didn't treat me like a teenager doing comedy. He treated me like a comic. And in, in fact, he treated me probably, you know, better than most. But, so he actually he also, able- but, but he also just was, you know, could be such an asshole and had his ego as a comic wrapped up so much in what he was doing as a club owner. And his thing, you know, like his reputation is just like wanting to own the whole thing and very much like uh, wanting to make all the money or yeah. I mean, he had that kind of, all he that. had that kind of vibe to it. All that, you know, and yeah. he was, and he was ultimately terrible to our friend Lewis Lee. They were partners and, you know, their, oh, breaking, that's right. their breaking up was the birth of Acme comedy company. Yeah, because now I remember. Now I remember from the Lewis Lee uh, autobiography thing. Uh, autobiography thing. Yeah. So he. So, it's hard to say that he had a heart of gold deep down. <laughs> uh, he had a fucking heart of iron to stay beating that long. But he, uh, you know, it was both. Like I said, you know, it's like you know he was he could be very generous in some ways and be you know a shithead club owner other ways. But he, not that it, matters, you know, it was but always we, like he would find a reason to make you not want to thank him. <laughs> did, did, did I always ask this? Like, but he was, also. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Was he funny? Yeah, he was a good comic. You know, his act over the years, you know, became so Minnesota Midwest dependent. You know, because that's yeah, that's the only place he worked. You know that. I don't know that it would have, you know. I, I mean, he was a really, he was a solid joke writer and a solid comic. Uh, That's pretty amazing because I never knew that until you just said that. Yeah, no, he I really didn't... was. He was not at all a hack, you know, except for the fact that he did, you know, jokes for decades, you know. Right. But, but right. Uh, you know, and even though, like, I remember he bought a couple off me. I traded him a couple of jokes for a set of spe- uh, Bose speakers <laughs> once. Yeah, you know, and he picked decent jokes, you know, <laughs> and then he used them for thirty years. Um, were they bookshelf speakers or the larger? They were bookshelf speakers <laughs> that yeah. had been in his brew pub. Were there a lot of articles about? I mean, did he get? Uh, I mean, did, he got local coverage. Yeah, yeah. And they had and they had written an article in the Star Tribune about him being in hospice a week ago or so. And was it quite a while since he's been doing clubs, or he, was he doing clubs the whole time? Uh, well, I think he had to retire. He kind of had to retire for his health for a while, and then he kind of went back and was sitting on stage. Uh, right, right. So, and he would bring in Louis Anderson to do one nighters together, and you know, but he wasn't really. 
he was booking a few things and putting himself in a few things, you know. And I'm sure he made amends to uh, Lewis and all the people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It is, it is, though, it is, uh, not that that's necessarily sad. You know, I don't really I talked to Lewis the... about it yesterday, and, you know, we both were like, you know, he was horrible, but neither of us would be where we would, we are without him. Right. On the murder shows, you cannot believe how many people, uh, forgive people for killing their daughters and stuff like that. So it's like, the fact that you could, <laughs> it's like, I'm not saying that it's nothing that you have gratitude, but I mean, I think is, that is the idea. The well, idea is not to go, like, and I'm saying well, it almost the, to myself. It is, it is the Christian ideal, certainly. Right. When you see people forgiving the murders of their family members, it's almost always rooted in Christianity. And it's one of the best things about Christianity because it actually really does work that you're, that on a psychological level or whatever, that carrying around the anger like i saw a show recently where the the mother realized she was angry at herself about her daughter being killed than she was about at the person who killed killed and so that that made her able to uh forgive but i don't want people to feel bad when they can't forgive because some people sometimes cannot forgive like i don't forgive hitler yet no we'll give it time <laughs> oh, I don't think it's necessary to forgive Hitler. No, I don't think it is either. Yeah, because that's where you get into the uh, well, and it, and it doesn't, co- and it's not corrosive to hate Hitler. No, it's it's, it's I not call personally that, corrosive the way that resentment is. I call that my wheelhouse. Yeah, your comedy act is the house that Adolf built. <laughs> You know what, folks? I make fun of the guy, but I gotta be honest with you. I think this is what they mean when they say, you know, they when they say we all have dark sides, we all have light sides. They mean like, like I should thank, thank you, Hitler, for providing my family. Now look, Speaking I of- want to say to the people of New, Josh. I'm sorry, you just Ma- you you're ruining my segue. Oh, okay, go ahead. Speaking of dead Jews, I watched the jazz <laughs> singer the other day. <laughs> and you know what? Thank you very much for uh, just uh, you, saying that so nicely because uh, the, the times where you would like send me text during the podcast, you are f- fucking making me sick right. to my stomach. Would you listen to one guy? And I always thought that was the worst part of uh, of our old rules was that you would text me in the chat. We had a chat area. <laughs> right. I, I really j- want show notes and things right. in a, a chat area, but I don't want it. Don't get me wrong. I don't want it enough for me to lift a finger to do anything. Then there will be no show notes. So I, watched you know the, I so I watched the jazz singer the other day. I really want. Oh, okay. Now the jazz singer is the uh, the original. Is the jazz first singer. talkie. The it, first talkie. It is the first talkie. Although it's not really a talkie. It's a silent movie with with sound parts in it. Oh, I, I'm going to pretend like I knew that. Oh, of course. I mean, of course, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's is. not even any dialogue. Look, ma. Hey, ma. Well, I mean, there's a little dialogue where it bleeds over in the musical numbers. But otherwise, it's all true, you know, straight silent movie with with cards, with dialogue. And how cards. did you? How long? How long is it? It's a it's a it's a feature length. I mean, not and, long, and, you know, it's probably under an hour and a half. And, and it, so, what what'd you think? Tell me what you. I mean, did did you like it as a movie? Uh, no, no, it's not a very good movie. It's we, you know, it's weird how Jewish it is. Um. And it's and the blackface is really hard to get past. <laughs> so ultimately, we but may never be able to get past. There is a scene that's uh, that's pretty ironically hilarious as he's sitting in his dressing room, smearing blackface makeup on his face, and talking about how he, you know, he yearns for uh, Yom Kippur and how it's an issue of his race. You know, he's talking about his race while he's putting on blackface, and it's not it's not meant to be ironic in the movie. <laughs> oh. Oh. But the other thing is just how, you know, 
there's no reason for the blackface whatsoever. Because, you know, the songs he sings in the movie are just a guy on stage with a band. Although, did he kind of, is his whole patter based on black? Well, I think, I guess, I guess, I guess so. Oh, mama, mama. But because you can't, you can't hear any other dialogue, you don't exactly know, you know, but it's like when he's going, you ain't seen nothing yet. It doesn't sound black. (laughs) Yeah. Ain't seen nothing yet. So it's very, but, it's, it's such but a, now, but it's, it, you, it, it's this very sort of upsetting <laughs> sort of factor that, it, that is, you know, first it's offensive, you know, but you all, you also go, all right, you know, it was a hundred years ago. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's sort of besides the point that it's offensive in some ways, but it's also just baffling that it was part of the act. Right. Well, it's baffling to me what it is really, in a way. In other words, like I, I, uh, I, I, in my, in my, whatever you call, where you mix these things up, you know, when they're, they're just images from your childhood. I mean, I, I, not to drop a name, but Peter Boyle. No, but once I was saying about like I was making fun of Al Jolson, like how it was like ah, and he, and I said, how was that? And he goes, no, no, he was such a great singer. Now I don't know how he would know that. Or if he's right about that, but I can't even see that he was a great singer. That's how far out of my uh, no, you know, watch, you know, if you ever see the jazz singer, he can sing. You know, it's the style of the day. You know, but in fact, he he was a good singer. Uh, Where's California? Here I come from. Uh, I don't know, and I don't know that that's Jolson. Ah, uh, uh, the flowers, nah, mama. Nah. Yeah, I don't. I think you're conflating things. But there's no. Here's the other thing. There's no other movies. He's a. That, that's his only movie. He didn't go to have a movie career, did he? Or was he? Was he a popular? He was silent a huge film? star. He was a huge star of <laughs> vaudeville. I don't understand it. I I don't. Understand. Yeah, he was a huge. Okay, I guess I'm never going to be able to put myself back in to feel what it was like. But but no, he wasn't a huge silent movie star. Right, and this was, is all. In the background of white people, still kind of, uh, what's it called when you take people's culture? Appropriating. Appropriating other people's culture. Kind of, but, you know, it's such a, it, there, you know, there was a lot of weird uh, uh, Jewish culture appropriating for that movie, too. You know? How do you mean? Because uh, he comes, he's the son of a cantor who's, you know. Who's, oh, you know, who's disappointing now, the family and he, he, you know, saves his father's life by singing Kol Nidre. And yeah, I mean, it's. Oh, I mean, it's, oh, it's okay. this deeply Jewish melodrama. Well, that part's great, right? <laughs> uh, I guess so. And then you have Danny Thomas, who did it the next time. He's culturally appropriating Judaism. And then you, have, and then you have Neil Diamond, who did it. He's culturally appropriating acting. Are you telling me there's a movie like The Rose, but it's with Neil Diamond and he's playing Al Jolson? He's not playing Al Jolson. He's playing. <laughs> uh, he's playing the. It's it's the third remake of or the second remake of the Jazz Singer. And this with, paper, Laura, with Lawrence Olivier as his father, in case the contrast wasn't sharp enough for you. <laughs> All right, so it's like Neil Diamond, Sir Lawrence Olivier, and Lucy Arnaz. Well, that's not, but and Franklin Ajay. <laughs> oh, I love Franklin Ajay. This is this movie was terrible, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> how do you, not, you know, How I, do you not know about Neil Diamond's The Jazz Singer? That's what I. I don't really. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't even ring a bell as you're saying it. It doesn't mean like you know. I, you tell me, Rich Little doing all the parts on the Love on the Rocks. <laughs> he no big surprise. Just pour me a drink and I'll tell you some lies. Is that in the? Is that yesterday is gone? Now all I want is a smile. Yes, it is. I honestly, I think, I think America is from that movie too. Well, I just realized there is a definite Cat Stevens. Have we talked about the Cat Stevens Neil Diamond that they have? Their, that earnestness is in both of their voices, right? Yeah. But but Neil Diamond's is definitely more Jewy. <laughs> I never thought of him. Did you think of him as a Jew? Well, I always thought of Billy Joel as a Jewish performer. 
Like I always think like, I always felt embarrassed about being from Long Island. Yeah. And so I always felt embarrassed about kind of liking Billy Joel, which I always had mixed feelings about him, but it was like, yakata by the power. This is your schmicky. He always seemed kind of a cornball, right? I, I, I don't, it wasn't, cornball wasn't my problem with him, I guess. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like songs like, oh, ha, he, ha, ho, ha, he, ha, ha, where he does, he kind of like, now it's Billy Joel doing doo-wop. Now it's Billy Joel doing, it's only, like that song, it's only rock and roll. Does that sound like rock and roll or does it sound like someone using rock and roll to make a point about music? Wow. Okay. That's save some me. deep save shit. Me. Save, <laughs> me. save me from this. Okay. Here's what I'm going to tell you right now. I actually like Billy Joel, even though I dislike him. Like, I like Baby Grand, that song, stupid yeah. song. I like. Uh, I don't like Baby Grand because he's doing his Ray Charles impression. Right. 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 I don't like I should not like it. <laughs> it's a good song, but he's doing his Ray Charles impression. Yeah. And that's why it's not good. <laughs> me, but. On the other hand, Joe Cocker, who Ray Charles loved, I mean, he, he, he was a, it was a tribute to Ray Charles, yeah. but, but he was also, you know, like you told me a lot, a long time ago that you felt that Kenny G has soul. People can't see it, but he had his ability to hit those notes. Yes, it's boring. Yes, it's unimpressive. But I'd put the side of his mouth up against the greats. <laughs> hey, you know, does this uh, mean that I may have sexual issues that I would like to put my mouth on some of the greats? I like that one. I watched the I watched the Rick James documentary the other night. Oh, I wanted to watch it. Is it uh, is it worth watching? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not a it's not a bad doc, really, but it's like he's not a good dude. <laughs> you know? kind of, it's like you know, the interesting part of it is that he sort of started out in you know his musical career, crossing paths with the Joni Mitchells and Neil Youngs and all that. Um, but it's really the story of someone who just had incredible ambition to make it in music and when he made it in music he just was a huge asshole crack addict you know wait who are we talking about rick james oh god thank you for being nice about it <laughs> i really thought we were talking i knew you mentioned rick james and then there was some vi really terrible violence and stuff yeah, right yes and you you can't talk your way out of it like it was just well they kind of they try in the doc which is another unsettling part of it <laughs> And let's give Rick James his due. I love the hits are great. That's can't touch this. That MC oh, Hammer. I just did MC Hammer yeah, that, like a white. But MC Hammer was was that same riff. He sampled. He, he, he sampled Super Freak for. Am I the last Rick person? Jam Rick James made more money off of Can't Touch This than any of his songs. Did did he first try to take it, or it was all at the whole time? Was uh, I think was the whole, no. I, th I think the whole time they got credit because I think after uh, the Vanilla Ice uh, under pressure thing. Oh my God! So even the one thing I liked about MC Hammer was completely derived uh, from something else. I hate to anything... I hate to burst your MC Hammer bubble here. <laughs> no, I just realized I'm trying to think. Was I? Uh, did I like MC Hammer? No. No. Uh, I liked the idea that you can't touch. I wished I had that kind of energy if you can't touch this. Yeah. I also watched uh, News of the World. What's that? That's uh, Tom Hanks Western. Oh, my God. It's good. Oh. It is. I th what? It's kind uh, of, uh, it's like a movie that could have been made any time in the last 60 years. Like it could have been John Wayne and Jodie Foster. It's like him taking this little girl home kind of is the the broadest description. So that was, I watched, did I tell you I watched Clickbait already? Uh, yes. Adrian Grenier. I've watched other stuff too. They said, I thought, I may have been fooled by um, advertising, but it seemed like in in September all these things are coming. Wait till September. 
all kinds of, and I've seen everything. I saw the, I've seen the, uh, the Bob Ross thing. Where is what's happening? Am I now using you as if you are a representative of Netflix and I'm complaining? I think you're you're thinking of me as the man a little bit, and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. You don't like that at all, do you? No, you're not representative of that. You know what else I watched was uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly the other night. Which is, um, which is that a who directed that? Uh, Sergio Leone. Oh, I've never seen any of those movies, and that's based on the dirt on the Seven Samurai. No, no, it's not at all. What's it based on? Uh, the script for the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and who's Sergio Leone? Uh, he directed uh, spaghetti westerns. And that's what these things are, right? That's what this was, yes. <laughs> and so what did you think? And, and, and tell me, was it good? It's, good? it's a good movie, yeah. I mean, it's another... I mean, those spaghetti westerns are so weird because they're all dubbed. It's like all the actors just spoke their native tongue while doing the scene. And then they, <laughs> and then they dubbed them later. They <laughs> dubbed uh, So, you know, the performances are, can be uneven in them. But Clint Eastwood's was good in it. And Eli Wallach, though he's, you know... We're doing a Mexican face throughout the whole movie. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty great performance. Uh, if you're not, you know, dead, if you can get dead offended it. by it out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, uh, are you watching, do you watch any Amazon? Ah, uh, yeah, I try to, I try to, uh, cycle around the streamers. And tell me that you're not Discovery Plusing it, though. I am not Discovery Plusing it. I'm sorry to say. Don't be sorry. Oh, I am. I'm so desperate because they're saying, do you think this is really going to work for people to go, you can watch everything the Property Brothers ever did anytime you want to? Yeah, well, you know, I would say if you weren't such a true crime junkie, you might have a leg to stand on. That's true. <laughs> you know what? Last night, you I just, had you very, were singing the praises of uh, the ID channel or whatever it's fucking called. It's so good. <laughs> it's my home network. Last night, I forgot it was Rosh Hashanah, and then I was at the LA River, which is not too far from us. Yeah. And there were all these Orthodox Jewish people going, going down there right at sunset. Yeah. And then they went down there, and I'm not look. I'm Jewish, so I'm not making f- fun of anything. But they all seemed, all seemed, not they, I'm not saying they, like uh, I'm separating myself from these type of Jews, although I don't understand them. Right. <laughs> so they all went down there and then they were, they turned and started praying towards a direction. What direction is that? And east. I didn't east. know we did that. It's always east. And it's always like, the, is this what you do with the Wailing Wall? Yeah, it is. And is this what you do every that's what they're, night? That's what when, the reason they are facing east is because it's towards the Wailing Wall on the temple. And is it happy? It didn't, didn't seem like it was Happy New Year. What are they saying well, at that they, point? I mean, they don't drop a ball, if that's what you mean. <laughs> it was pretty festive. <laughs> you know, I'm not a big it is fan a so, of... It is a solemn holiday. Not, no, not, Why is it not, solemn? Not Yom Kippur solemn, but... See, that's what bothers me. Why isn't it not with noisemakers and stuff? Like, hey, hey, ba, 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 champagne, right. champagne. Because it's a, it's a period of reflection. Why? It's, oh, that, ends, this starts- that, that starts with Rosh Hashanah and ends with Yom Kippur. Okay. And so in between our- the two, and one thing yeah. I'll do right now, just to fulfill my commandment. Andy, I apologize for any wrongs I've done against you in the past year. It didn't sound. It didn't I sound hope you sense. will sincerely. It didn't forgive sound me. so neat, sincere. All right. Well, then I'm gonna. Then it's when when come Yom Kippur, it's gonna get written in the book. All fucked up. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. No, no, no. You know what, Josh? Thank you. And I too would like to. Have I apologized enough to you? For uh, yes. yes, you have. Yeah, but is because I could go one more step and make it a little bit sickening. Well, I, so mean, I, I guess I, I guess I could hear that. Okay, you ready? Sure. I feel like on this occasion of Russia. How do you change your mind so quickly? How can you turn on the dime? Though I've come to expect it, I get shocked every time. It's a long way to happen. 
You just don't have the time How did you get wound so tightly? Is it some kind of disease? When I offer to help you It's like I'm speaking Chinese It's a long way to happen So get off of your knees want it to be like a travel channel thing if we could have a ooh, travel i guess sell it to the travel channel yeah yeah because everything's haunted with them ah okay Did you think well, welcome back to the or... welcome back to the show everybody see i had to, All right. I, I had to steamroll andy to get the show started you know that's not a night yeah let me tell you something and i okay okay neither one let me ignore it no tell me what you're thinking andy no, I didn't want to tell me what did it. I have worked on so many bits at the uh, Double Act convention this last weekend. The what convention? Double Act. Ah. At the, uh, it was all, everything's virtual these days with stuff like that. How sure. to be it. <laughs> that looked like a, that seemed like a uh, disgusted Bob and Ray, not Bob and Ray, Bob and Ray style person. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I was more dismissive, I think, than any comedy partner ever would have been. You should be. That's the problem with the acts. It's funnier to me if you don't, if you point out, folks, he's not funny. He's not saying anything funny. And he's trying to pin it on me. You like that acting? And... He's trying to pin it on me. Was the end um, in your script? Was the end italicized or was it all caps? Uh, and well, you're you know you've been in more rooms than I have been writers' rooms. Yeah. I've been in more rooms in general: escape rooms, Dungeons and Dragons, uh -huh. <laughs> Ernie's Hideaway. Insert the name. In I'm an '80s comic. Insert the name of a gay bar. Hey, I go to this place called. Uh, anal sex is <laughs> uh, what? <Wow>. What, <laughs> folks? Just I just landed in town. I, you know, I'm not homophobic at all. So strap yourselves in, but folks, 
people tell me, what is this butt, 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 uh, up the butt bar? <laughs> I got so both bored and sickened <laughs> by the, by the subject matter. And back to you, little studio, Bob Ray's type. <laughs> but I think, you, but I like that your comedy instincts just told you to slow down and linger. You know, in the old days, I would bail, I would blame. <laughs> People ask me at my workshops, "What do I recommend?" I recommend petering out. When bailing is always good. <laughs> What's that? Petering out is always the. Uh... Word of the I don't day. want to do that. That's unfair. Make a decision. Make a decision, people. So I think we have to dedicate Test Show 222 to the late Michael Constantine, who we erroneously called Michael Constantino last week, and I think might have <laughs> killed him. No, don't say things like that, because, you know, this is the type of thing. I told you I'm friends with the Constantino, the Constant. Exactly. Teen. Yeah, it's teen. You called him Tino, which caused me to call him Italian, and then, boom, we had double insulted him. And let me tell you something right now. If you're a member of the Constantino, is it Constantine family? <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm laughing like a morning DJ. Did I see you? J J I'm here with J. Al Elvis. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Elvis, boop, boop, Weinstein. Hey, you related to that guy. Uh, hey, Jay Elvis, you related to that guy. That, 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 other, that other Weinstein. Is he a Weinstein? The guy who's the, uh, uh, in J uh, And we'll be back with Jay Elvis. <laughs> Harvey. Harvey, you know that guy? And Andy Kindler, who does, you don't like Jay Leno, right? That's your whole thing. Okay, I got tired of the bit, and I apologize. Thank you. That was brought to you. That was brought to you by narcissists. Narcissists. They can't take the focus. Off. They can't stand the focus to be off themselves from more than eight. Andy's having a difficult day, everybody. And by that that's I mean, true. and by that I mean he's difficult. <laughs> oh, now that's. I walked right into it. <laughs> I'm actually having a good day. You know why? Because I was totally against this pre uh And I know you said, don't show the seams. It, haven't you said that to me all the time? Stop breaking the fourth wall. Do you always have to say, I'm sorry, folks, you're lying, Josh. It's not Thanksgiving morning. How long am I going to go until I, you break I, into the I don't know. I don't know. I mean, can't you save me? When, I don't know. Give me an on-ramp. Give me an on-ramp. I'll merge. <laughs> if I had an on-ramp, would I be waxing and waning and ranting and raving? I don't think so. I feel like our best plan here is to get to the questions and then get the fuck out. Oh, my God. This is what <laughs> we needed. What do you want to know? We love your questions so much. It's half our show. Half our show. Jason Parton says, "Is the in the word rock is the C or the K silent?" Well, clearly the C is silent because K brings all the funny. I, you know, remember we talked to, uh, uh, earlier, I mean, when we had that, uh, talked about what, the direction of the show. I mean, not really, but it would be nice if I could remember. The, now, if I saw the questions, I, it would help. I would know. And now I'm still lost. Yeah. I'm, see right. the question. And is the, is the C or the K silent? And the, the it's not the, I'm not saying it's not a joke, but the point would be, both those words have the <laughs> sound, and you're wondering if it's oh, Josh. Josh, I think I'm having a heart attack. Oh, Josh, Josh, I'm having angina from bad comedy. <laughs> oh my god! Someone, I swear to God, I'm not kidding. They just did you hear that? Are you on acid today? <laughs> no, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but thanks for saying that because. If I ever was thinking of it, 
it would be a terrible idea because I do have the same feeling you have. Like his, I'm getting paranoid. I'm not sure why I'm getting paranoid. But was I, was I yelling to you? Was it yelling? You weren't yelling, no. Okay. I mean, I wonder. I wonder what my when I practice Cuomo every morning. Are you tasting sound. any metals right now or anything? <laughs> You know, I told this to Susan. I told it. She said to me, look, the guy's mean spirit. I said, no, he's quick. <laughs> not, not taking the whole thing up. Um, Pickles. That's the part about this. Pickles says. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm back. Hey, I'm back. Do you want me to just read the question? No, you do today? it. All right. You do it. All right. You do it. And to this question, I reserve the right to go right in. All right. How would Star Wars and It's a Wonderful Life be different if the characters of Chewie and Zuzu switched places? <laughs> uh, well, well, Star Wars would be pretty much the same. Uh, but It's a Wonderful Life would be a big, it would be, you know, it'd be, oh, that's right, Chewie, that's right. <laughs> Shut up, Chewie. Look, it's, it's, it's Chewie's. Who's oh. Chewie? She was Chewbacca. Is Chewbacca the one who's not, who's not really shouldn't have been created because it's an insult? Or am I mixing him up with uh, Hukaha, another character? Uh, you definitely are. Okay, who's that, char- who's that character? Uh, Andy's imaginary friend. Kindler, Andy Kindler. No, come on, Buka. It's like Bufalaka. It's like a... They didn't think it was insulting when they brought it on, and it was like comic relief for three or four movies, and it seems kind of racist. Are you thinking of Jar Jar Binks? Exactly. This is not the same character, this right? Is not. No. Okay. This, ah. is, this is the beloved Chewbacca. Is Doc here? Doc is not here. Okay, Chewbacca. All right. Is there anything that I'm required to do, uh, or do you think you've covered it? Uh, I'd kind of like you to just be quiet and we can move on. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'm going to read the next question. You ready? All right. Oh, did you have anything more for pickles? Pickles. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't return your quilt. Uh, Isa, is do you, do you say Isa? Isa seventy six. I do. All right. Thank you. I am patiently awaiting word on Andy's brother adopting me <laughs> things are getting dire i may have to mow my own lawn please send help <laughs> test show 222 this is the type of thing i'm telling you i have a ver- very good feeling you said this could be a cursed show because and michael constantine did die well but i mean if, if someone side, if someone tuned in right there they would have gone oh this is a show where andy learns to read <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And would that be so wrong? And I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You know, I told Josh before I started I had learning disabilities, and I'm, I'm, I, you know, I said, I know you're not going to, I know you wouldn't. You don't seem like the kind of fellow who would stick it in the eye of that. <laughs> Sorry. I got, my lawyer said I should make you try to look like the bad guy more. Go Marco Mare says. <laughs> Wait, where do you see that? Got it. Says, uh, Toronto, Take it away. Toronto Blue Jays play-by-play voice Buck Martinez pronounces two as chew. So we'll <laughs> often hear something like chew and chew with chew outs. Congrats on episode chew, 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 fellas. Happy there will be another season of chew Jews, chew mics, chew hours. I well, thank, thank thanks you. for taking the time on that one, Gomar. What do you mean? Are you? Is everything sounds sarcastic to me from you today? Everything What'd sounds sarcastic to me. <laughs> I can't. Get, I, it was like I'm like some people are like with clowns. I can. I always. I'm a sucker for that one. He's just sucker for that one. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Hey, it's Chewbacca in the morning. <laughs> Couldn't we have been on that show? Yeah, I think we could have uh, been on that show for 25 years. It's Chewbacca and Jew Boy. Who would Jew Boy have been? Either one of us. I think I think you pretty much have Jew Boy locked down. <laughs> First of all, people say to me, are you, it sounds like you're willing to just 
do anything capitalizing, uh, capitalizing on your stereotype for, as a, for to get cheap laughs. And I say, what about I need to pay for my rent? I mean, mortgage, don't you understand? Something like that. Yeah. Eastside 76 is back. You see how smooth we are now? Absolutely. You know, I want to tell you again, again I apologize. Not for this, but for the thing with the uh, situation. Uh, Eastside 76 said, well, you know, and I don't know about you, but when I, that's my, the, I am a participant in their uh, gasoline program. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Josh. Uh-huh. You're hurting my feelings. I missed the season two hashtag last week. Well, get, send up a flare. <laughs> I missed it, whatever he said last week, but I am so happy to have both of you back. My enlarged heart almost burst from the excitement. Test show two, two. Thank you very much. That makes me very, very happy. And I appreciate the kind words, even though I sound insincere. I am not. Uh, Seth Dick the Third says, Mama Dick the Third was worried she caused you guys to quit, but after hearing last week, she realized that at some point she was more engaged than either of you guys. She says, It seems like you snapped out of it. Sorry, this is how she is to me 24 7. Quite a little world you built for yourself there, Seth Dick the Third. Quite a little world. Who's that guy? That guy, who are you? Is that Mel Blank's son? Uh, <coughs> I almost choked. Hold on. I'm okay, Josh. I had the other way. I, I, I had it going the other way in the office pool. <laughs> really, is that... Is it really necessary to do that kind of humor? Has it come to that level? Just to get a laugh, you do that? Yeah, yeah. I think you should make it into a sting. And he's getting pummeled, and he's getting pummeled, and he's getting pummeled from... All sides. All right. I'm coughing. I'm sorry. I had. <laughs> you all right there, Skippy? <laughs> so That's Dennis Miller, his brother. Uh, yeah, it's anybody in his family is on their deathbed. Hey, uh, Choo Choo. Hey, Choo Choo, you sound like, uh, Tsitsi Pass <laughs> at Wimbledon. You okay there? I'm so, I had a word for him. There was a word that was going around. It's like, oh, God, he must be having a meal with that at home without anybody around him <laughs> before he has alienated even people who used to tolerate him. Hi, I'm the Quiet Storm comedian, Andy Kindler. Uh, this is how I sound post coughing. Ba 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 boom ba 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 hi da ba rouge ah da ha ba diddy the pa rouge the ha pa rouge is on fire. Pa rouge is on fire. Brought to you by Firestone Tires. Are you gonna read the question? Yeah. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What's that? What did I do there? From Perouche, Perouche says, what time is the train? Two, 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 two. What time is the train? Two, 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 two. What is he trying to do? I don't know. Josh, I don't don't get it. Do his other, one of his other questions. They're better. Oh, is it right below that? They're better. Okay. Andy, any U.S. Open favorites? Uh, when's that happening? Oh, I'm I going to, I'd like to say, say say pass. Say say pass. Well, I always root against Djokovic. Please don't tell me if it's already happened. Did it happen, Josh? Did what happen? The semifinals. Uh, I believe it's tonight. Okay, don't, don't tip it if it isn't. I'm rooting for the guy who's playing against uh, Djokovic, which is who is doing that. You don't want Djokovic to get the uh, slam? I thought you would know that since I'm a big Federer fan. Yeah, but Federer is no longer playing in the tournament. Shh, 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 shh. He's coming back. <laughs> I believe 
I, he, I need this job. Oh God, I need this job. No, I always, I'm, I'm reading. I don't want him to surpass Roger. It's cheap. It's, it's not coming from the best part of me. I'm yeah. better than this, Josh. Yeah. This isn't me. I got this, America. Yeah. Yay, Djokovic. But he, he already, he already lost the, sl- the golden thing because he lost the Olympics. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was nothing related to him. Uh-huh. <clears throat> wow. Who's he playing, though? Uh, T.T. Pass. <laughs> he can't be playing. And now, ah. and now, now finish the Perouche trilogy. Oh, thank you. Uh, I once turned to again word, from Perouche. Two word. <laughs> That's terrible, the way I mangled it. I once toured the tennis circuits as forehand, forehand. I don't understand that. I think it's, like a, it's like a Sirhan Sirhan. Oh, Sirhan Sirhan. <laughs> <laughs> he can go from puzzled to amused so fast. It's, he could turn on a dime, this one. I begged you, like from uh, defending your life, I begged you to get help, or is it from... No, it's not. It's from Tootsie. It I is. begged you to get therapy. No, that's not what it is. That's the other guy. Oh, Josh, in the middle. Have What's your take still? Let's take a one-second break. The Sonic commercials, yay or nay on the new? I, I haven't tuned myself into the new Sonic commercials. They're like this. <laughs> I go, I eat my pajamas. <laughs> oh, no, forget it. Forget it. Three in the morning, where am I going? To get some kind of a thing that it would be at Sonic. Ow, it's the not TV. TV. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's all right. It gave me a chance to put the sting in. Ow! <laughs> now that is a hit. Yeah. And you know, I'm like Cal Rudman from the movie One Trick Pony, 40 years of AM ears. When I hear a hook, I hear a hook. That's right. Mad City uh, Architect says, glad you back, boys. Also glad you felt confident to take a break. Never a great time for a vacation, but they are much needed. Thank you, Mad City Architect. I appreciate that, too. And I don't think we realized how much we did need it until we took it. Until today. Until this very show. Until right now. You know, right now, be here now. No, that's true. I don't know what you're saying, Josh. I don't know if you're trying to bait me into one of your groundling-style bits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring it down for this one. Okay. Bring it down, boys. Boys, bring it down. Okay. Chaotic Neutral says, the... hey, guys, yeah. apologies for the thread. I don't talk about this much, but after college, I worked in New York and D.C., eventually landing a gig at a secure data center three stories underground, five blocks from the White House. I started a few months before 9-11. Rough day, obviously. I knew people in the towers, and there was a legit fear that the White House, which we were connected to, would also be attacked. I spent most of the day dealing with the IT fallout with a bunch of ex-military guys, most of whom were also freaking out. Except for this one old-timer that acted like everything was fine. Thing is, he sounded just like Hugh Hauser. What'd he say again? Wow. Did you think it would come to that? <laughs> uh, this is just guy. Everybody stay, stay at your stations. Everything's going to be fine. I've I've been here a long time, and we've had things like this happen before. Everyone, just stay calm. Stay calm. Stop oh my talking. God! I saw just saw CNN. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sorry, I ran over you, but I was going to be the guy who was trying to tell you stop it, stop yelling. I can't think. Ah, but you'll take it into this over overdub studio, right? Don't even start with me. I swear to God. Do you hear that? What if that is the? What if that's the end? Okay, I will give you the pleasure of reading, and I'm not going to even tip it. The next one. God bless you. Unless you have another one to the are the old tag still around, and I take that like is, were those were the days, my friend? Song which and let some song. Says, uh, exactly. thanks to the pesky continental time difference, I missed out on welcoming you back last week, guys. Seriously, welcome back. Thank you, Em. We're glad to be back. Thank you. And, but I do feel like you made up, she did make up some 
What does that even mean? That's a lie. I mean, no, no Auntie, stop it. She's one of your friends, a, per- a person who cares about you. No, of course I care about M2, but why lie? Why lie? Harry Minot says, uh, was Bubber Miley really the first black guy to appear on stage with a white band? Is this recording out of copyright? And then he has a 1930 uh, record, which is still in copyright, unfortunately. Uh, how would we, are we, uh, do, have we advertised ourselves as an expert in anything like this or anything? I think he meant to write to Ken Burns Spiral. <laughs> is he looking in his profile pic off at the side or is he looking directly into the barrel? But I th- I don't know if Bubba, did Bubba, did Bubba Miley play with the Paul Whiteman? Oh, did he? I don't know. I don't know either. I was playing along. And welcome to the Jazz Hour here on 99.9. Yeah. Mama Dick the Third says, Howdy, fellas. I was wondering why there was no new episodes in my podcatcher of choice. Was there some kind of tension between the two of you? Either way, welcome back and Gamar Khatama Tova. Why are you mocking her, Eddie? What's, the, what's wrong? This is what I was talking about. The, why, what's wrong with you? This is why there was so, so much tension between the two of us. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you get a weird thing there? Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. That's the weird thing I was talking about earlier. Okay. Do you think we should just speed up the, the tone or I should get funnier? <laughs> that would, would, I think that might ward off any technical problems. All right. Let's keep going. Guy Incognito says, welcome back, you old building and loan. I recently saw King Crimson. Mercifully, it didn't get canceled. Are there any shows you guys have earmarked to see in the next year? Delta permitting, or are we going back into that goddamn Keebler elf tree to sit in our nuts? Oh my, I, I like that. Is that a metaphor, or is that actual description of what it's going to be like? Uh, it can be both, really. I don't know. I can't predict anything. I really don't know. I used to know. No. I used to think, there was a time period where I thought, uh, I, I, I maybe we'll be through with it like by next season of the horrible flu or something. I don't see an end so far. I have tickets in December now to go see Elvis Costello that my manager bought me. But uh, I think that's a good that's a good thing. Uh, that's a good thing to do and to have tickets for. I I I, I don't know why I'm playing Mister Optimistic. Yeah, You're I, hearing this, right? I am hearing. Is the FBI? Is this the FBI? What did you do, Josh? Did you sell me out to the FBI, Duckman? says, uh, I thought it was pretty cruel to make Andy attempt to read letters on Labor Day of all days. <laughs> Andy's getting pummeled. Andy's getting pummeled. Andy's getting pummeled from all sides. That's a good... You know... <laughs> you suck. Duck, man, I should... If I was right here in the room... Cody... Cody... The, oh. I'm just trying you to. I'm just of, trying to race through now, man. <laughs> you know why you do it? I think it's more important that I'm here. The improvement is me just knowing what you're saying. Yeah. That's, so take it away, Josh. Cody the Sloth says I misspelled a word on my last question of season one. I'm fully aware the podcast needed a break because of my typo. Thank you for not making a bigger deal of it. How can I cope with the pain of my grave mistake? Oh well. Well, you know, now that we're back, it's all forgiven. It's all forgiven, and I'm sorry. I don't want to apologize for you, to you, Josh, for trying to turn us into the Sklar brothers. Andy wanted to sell you, under, uh, wanted to throw you under the bus, Cody the Sloth, but I, I edited it out. You know, this is he. You accuse me just because I say bad things and suggest mean things. I'm the bad guy. Is that what you're? Is that where you're going with it? Yes. Thank you. That was a good character for me. Joel just Joel says, loving having you guys back. Thank you. Happy New Year, Jewish one. I will be attempting to fast on Yom Kippur and wondered if you lovely gents have, and if so, what did would you eat to break the fast? Uh, I have. I have. I, I have fasted for maybe just the slight majority of Yom Kippurs in my life. I, I don't anymore because it's sort of disingenuous for me. Um. Uh, because the point the point to fasting is that it allows you to focus on prayer. And so yeah. just fasting and not praying doesn't have a lot of meaning to me. 
and not eating just never let me to me. Wow. Uh, uh, but yeah. but the breaking the fast that I, uh, there was we broke the fast the same way literally every year of my childhood because we went to my my aunt Marge and Uncle Sheldon's house. This is my father's aunt and uncle, and she made the exact same dinner for every family gathering she had at her house for fifty years. And the uh, and that dinner was a was a oven barbecue oven barbecue style chicken I would say. <laughs> uh, a zucchini and cheese casserole, a noodle kugel, <laughs> and a salad that was brought by either my mother or her daughter. It's almost it's, uh, but it's practically on, home cooking. But, but on Yom Kippur, the thing that they would break the fast with was a a, a, a fruit cup, which consisted of like melon, uh, some I think pineapple. Um, grapes and banana slices covered with with uh, ginger ale, and everyone would eat it, and everyone would have the exact same conversation. Ah, so refreshing! Ah, such a great way to break the fast! Ah, so refreshing! But what's the truth? It was you know mildly refreshing, but you know not the food I was looking for. <laughs> oh my god! I thought you were going to tell me like. My memory, I only have two or three memories that are good, but the, or one with the sickos at sicko with the honey on the hollow with an apple. That's, That's a memory. Yeah, but apples and honey is a Rosh Hashanah thing. So that you're having a couple of memories at once, I think is what you're doing. Don't tell the me. The is the, uh, <laughs> is the etrog, which is the lemon-like thing, and the lulav, which is the branch thing that gets shaken. At the harvest. That's for that's for Sukkot. Right, and you but we, we had for some reason we would have that with bread and honey. Bread and honey is one thing. Apples and honey, that's a whole different tradition. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about except I had two all I'm saying is I had two positive experiences in my life at a temple and they were involved in food. Quack 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 and he has special and he special because he had pain as a child. Stephen L. Yates says the triple point of a substance is the temperature and pressure at which the three phases, gas, liquid, and solid, of that substance coexist in a thermodynamic equilibrium. I've started making homemade yogurt. Do you like yogurt? Hey, look, Stephen L. Yates, uh, not exactly the, Sher the Sherman Helmsley, I mean the Sherman... Sherlock Holmes of uh, wow, just what's it called when I you distract know. somebody? I don't know. No, but he's like you're not exactly misdirection. Uh, misdirection is what you're saying. Yeah, you have the king of misdirection. So maybe a magician could go in there. Something like that. Nice magician. Blah 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 blah. Words that will put me to sleep. Boom. Do you like yogurt? We're well, gonna you know want. Steven, I'm not taking the bit. <laughs> I'm going to get inappropriately angry, and I'm going to yell out a couple things at you. Uh, I don't want your your homemade yogurt. I don't, think he was Stop. I don't think he was offering to ship you yogurt. I think he was just curious. Okay, Josh. I've spilled. I've spilled. Every, how many more questions do we have? Because I've spilled a shake all over the carpet. Uh, just a couple. Do you want to? Uh, do you think cleaning up the shake will uh, help? Um, I mean, I want to finish them and then pay attention to it. I just took a, lifted a cup of iced coffee off the carpet. Yeah, I don't feel. Like, I was going to. I don't feel like you're going to really be here for these last couple of questions. But here's the thing, Josh. I feel you're not. You are not. I hope you're not angry at me, but. I did a kind of a bonehead Jerry. If Jerry Lewis was a real person who just was an idiot, yeah. <laughs> I did a bonehead thing. Yeah. I hope I didn't ruin your clothes. Well, considering this day started with I can't find my laptop, it's really par for the course. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I can't find my laptop. I love you, Josh. All right. Do, would you like to promote anything? And then I'm going to get rags. Uh, I want to promote a cleaning solution. I love you. And 
Pela Buda Pila Chaka Chakonga.